and welcome back to Sunday Live. Thank you very much um, for staying with us. Uh, it's time for our Sunday Live interview, and my guest in studio, Professor Peter Kagwanja, right next to me, and Martin Andati across from me, both political analysts. You're both welcome to the program. It's been so, last week was such a week of high political drama, and we're going to see it carry forward into this week. I want to start uh, with former C.S. Waigoro's and Waigoro's uh, latest wars with this Kafura affidavit um, and what it also means for the EACC. What are the implications of this latest uh, affidavit, do you think, uh, for the former C.S. and for EACC? I think for the former C.S., it is, um, I think it must be a shock to her, because uh, when you watched her the other time in the interview, you thought she was completely off the hook. And when the EACC an announced that uh, she's cleared of all allegations and everything, then we, we thought she was ready to go, if she wanted to go politically, or want to settle down as a farmer, or whatever she wanted to do, now she's a clean person. The affidavit came uh, even as a shock to many of us. And I think the, the, the ramifications of that are for Jubilee politics, uh, and national politics in general, is yet to come, and as you say, it's it likely to go on next week. Um, what do you think the ramifications an, an, an are? An affidavit is an affidavit. Uh, it, it is it's the words of one person. It has to be put before the court. So, but as you know, uh, perceptions sometimes have a role to play, and I think that's where uh, the perceptions of corruption are coming because of the allegations made in the affidavit, and that the affidavit is sworn by a person you can see, and a person who links are beginning to emerge that they were clear, uh, there were some linkages. Mm. Uh, the, as to whether it's credible is another matter because I, um, I am yet to, <laughs> I'm yet to find out how uh, a hairdresser will handle a billion uh, within that thing. It is, I mean, I think even for us, we are still waiting to Don't see. Don't underestimate uh, well. the ambition of any person to handle any amount of money. Okay, uh, uh, what about for you, what are the implications specifically for EACC, which is a body that has at one point said it cleared, uh, you know, the former CES, went ahead even to give um, that letter uh, to the head of the civil service, then comes out with a clarification that this was just on, you know, apparently some four cases. The initial letter did say that. Has this sort of put the EACC in bad light and does it still appear a credible organization when it comes to fighting graft or has it shown that it does deal with some individuals with velvet gloves and we have uh, those of us out there we know that ESCC is not serious about fighting corruption it's all uh, they are playing ping pong and you see look at the speed with which uh, they had cleared Uyghur. yet uh, there are people who are you remember when the president gave the list of shame there are people up to now, their cases have not been cleared. But you saw the, the speed with which they rushed to clear this one. But coming back to the issues of the affidavit, you know, the father to Kabura says today that uh, the lady is not even a hairdresser. She, she did IT. And she lives in a rented apartment in, uh, in uh, Kino, a two-bedroom uh, apartment. So basically what he tells is she was a conduit. And I'm, I'm, I'm surprised that uh, Prof here is shocked uh, with the revelations. Okay. Because, uh, you know, when the issues of, uh, of Waiguru came out, people out there in the streets uh, kept on complaining. And uh, the, the information now is coming out. And there is more which is going to come out. This, is, this latest information is coming, uh, you know, I think about two weeks before the Jubilee Coalition marks four years in power. What does it say about their commitment to fight graft? And what, if anything, can the president do specifically about this case to show that he is actually committed to zero tolerance on corruption? Mm, I think we are, we, are try we are inviting too much drama into this thing. Uh, I think corruption or theft is not a collective responsibility upon which you can judge whether the government is doing well or not doing well. Of course, there is the responsibility of the government to ensure that we have a corruption-free society. And, and I think if you've listened to the president in terms of the, the pass out parades of police officers uh, in almost three or two occasions now, within two weeks, the, the theme is corruption. In Mombasa it was corruption. I think the commitment of the government to fight corruption uh, is is not in doubt, particularly the president, that one, that one is, is very clear. I mean, he himself has not been identified with any of these. But of course, pol we are entering the political season 2017. And the urge to depict the government as unable to uh, 
fight corruption. But when you look is at it, the is, is it an urge or are those the fact on the ground? The truth is, uh, Anne, mm. the truth is, uh, the Uruto team is not keen on fighting corruption. The political will is not there. You know, the, you remember the president is on record saying that uh, there is corruption in his own office. And uh, the Minister of Revolution and Planning was, is, uh, is under the presidency. Mm. And uh, who is uh, implicated? Anu Iguru. So all, all these issues now emerging, and, and you know the president has never been able to crack, to crack the whip, apart from reading the list of shame. Mm. What, would he, what would he do that would crack the whip? You know, he can send some of those fellas home. And, uh, you, you know, he, he needs to, to look more firm, you know? Because, oh, like, you, you know, when the president sits uh, out there and laments like everybody else is mm. lamenting, then uh, it beats logic because he has the powers and he has the instruments. You see, like now, as we are talking now, mm. the head of the bank fraud uh, unit has been adversely mentioned. But, you know, the guys are still sitting pretty. Let me they should have gone home. Yeah, let me, let me you me. know, you, you suspend him, and uh, you know, th th there are some who are constitutional officers. No, he I has got to go through the process, but like that one is not a constitutional office, you know? Yeah. So you tell the fella, step aside, go home, uh, and, and let us uh, look at some of these issues. Okay. Okay. So, okay. You, you know, the road is all through in the system, and the uh, prof is trying to claim that uh, it is issues of perception. But uh, when you, you, you look at the details and the kind of money that uh, is being lost, it is huge. But look at the look at the hemorrhaging of the government as it tries to fight corruption. How many ministers are, are out now? The government has been hemorrhaging. At one point, the government was almost going below the constitutional requirements of the number of cabinet yeah, ministers. Yeah, but you know you can't because they have been because suspended. Because you are scared about they were, they were Let finish making yeah. this point. Yeah, uh, first. The president, uh, the government generally has gotten rid of yeah. anybody who has been associated. S some of them have not been proven. Some are caught. But you, because there is that perception, you let them go. We are trying to cultivate a government based on the rule of law, not on the cowboy uh, kind of uh, leadership we have had before that I suspect that you are corrupt and come and grab you and put you behind bars. There, there, there are courts here. There are institutions okay. here. So, uh, so what we are talking about? Yeah. So what we are talking about is: can we deepen our institutions to be able to deal with corruption? The personality of either the minister or the president is not the one we are going to rely upon to solve our problems. We have courts. We have other institutions. Why don't we deepen Strengthen them? the institutions? Yeah. Gentlemen, we must move on uh, to our next uh, topic this evening, which is the seeming rift in the rift. You know, it's, it's seemingly exacerbated by the massive rally that Kanu had um, there at Kapka Tet grounds, I think, in the last few days or so. Is there real trouble brewing for the deputy president in the Rift Valley and for the Jubilee Coalition at large? There is serious trouble in Rift Valley. And... Uh, if Ruto doesn't play his politics very well, he's going to become irrelevant. You, you know, the, the Kalenjin nation, they normally, they, lead, they don't follow, the masses don't follow their leaders. It is the leaders who follow the masses. You remember in 2007, Ruto didn't want to support, uh, to support Raila. But the people told him, you must support Raila, because uh, Ruto was very keen on supporting either Musaria or Kalonzo that time. But the people told him, you must go and support uh, Raila. And uh, in 2013, when he went and sat and gave them the options, they decided that uh, they are going to support uh, uh, Kibaki or Kibauru. So uh, this time, you know, th there are issues of uh, teachers because uh, Socion has had issues and uh, the government mishandled the issue of the teacher strike and the pay. The, although plus that, the, the issues of uh, the rebellion, the, the issues in uh, Kericho, in uh, Bomet, because Isaac Ruto was very close to William, and they worked very closely. Then they are the, they are the rebel MPs. So when you combine all these fa factors, plus the tycoons, the likes of uh, David Lagata and uh, Kule, mm -hmm. who, who feel that uh, Ruto has given them a road deal, mm -hmm. then they b bungled the nomination because uh, Ketel should not have influence that needs to be, to be nominated. You know? So all those factors combined are now coming in and... Uh, giving Ruto a very, very difficult time. Well, what would you say is the, is the source of the deputy president's perceived woes there? Mm. I think we are still, uh, and we are still hanging in the Kanuira kind of uh, politics where you expect the things to be consensus, that if things, people move towards the, the same direction. The Kanjins, are ex like every other community in Kenya, are experiencing democracy and there are choices they, they would not want to make. It might not necessarily be because this is a candidate of the deputy president or no, but they, they may not like the candidate, that's one option. Two, 
you cannot not also add a little canoe because uh, yes it lost in 2007 yes it had lost in 2002 yes but you cannot say that it is a weaker party uh, and and so on so the, the what we are experiencing in the rift valley is the normal turns of the wheel of democracy and the deputy president has to to stand his guns he has two weeks to go he may come on top if he plays his game well, a day, day in politics is a lifetime. Mm -hmm. uh, so there are two weeks now. Anything but could happen. Anything, okay. yeah. But they say that the, there are those who believe that the larger problem is this f uh, forceful, you know, measure by the Jubilee um, top leadership to merge parties and to force people into coalitions and marriages that they're just not comfortable with. Do, do you think that it will be a larger problem for Jubilee strongholds in the Rift, in central Kenya as well? Yeah. The, the whole idea of having one uh, political movement is basically the utopian of every democracy you want to have a, a, a party you can call your home that's why we talk about america as a strong democracy so the idea of jubilee having one party is a brilliant idea the idea of having odm and cord as a powerful formation is a good idea which is the nature of our democracy but you've got to approach that very very tactfully and strategically because they are already entrenched interests in political parties for example those who are in would not want to be to, to dissolve themselves and 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 therefore i think the the, the jubilee needs to rethink very very seriously how, the, how they are going to approach this merger mm -hmm. otherwise they might lose more than gaining right. I, I think that's the fear what? we need uh, you know when you look at even cost there are issues because uh, people want to have their own small outfit you've heard even the mps at cost complaining that uh, they don't have a principle in code so I, I, right now, you know, th let uh, the people have their own outfit. Then with time you can be able to see. Uh, even if you want to get into a coalition, you will be able to come in from your own party. But you know, the way the, the Jubilee thing was done, it was very poorly done, and there was not a concern. And you've seen the problems even in uh, Meru. You saw Munya walking out the other day, and he has refused. He's not going to dissolve uh, his outfit. So they'll need uh, to look at those issues and see can they do it better because if they don't do it uh, that way they will have a lot of problems i thank you both for your time this evening we're taking a short break we're back with more news after this stay with sunday life